Welcome back. <clears throat> um, yeah. So when we melt material, whether it's a dry melt or a wet melt, we can typically get three main kind of types of magma. We get three different types of magma. I mean, there's always kind of mixtures and in-betweens, but in general, we can focus on, on three different kind of categories of magma. The first is basaltic magma. This has a low viscosity. Viscosity is uh, is how runny or sticky or slow moving a substance is. If something has a low viscosity, it's very flowy, it's very runny. So basaltic magma has a very low viscosity. It flows very easily, and when it erupts, it out of volcanoes, it generally creates gentle eruptions. <clears throat> so that's basaltic magma. The reason it has low viscosity is because it's melted material from the upper crust area and it's lower in silica. Silica classification of minerals with things like quartz. Just because where it's from, a little bit deeper down, so up in the upper mantle, just the material that, it, that it's melting to create this magma is lower in silica, um, therefore it has a lower viscosity. It flows very easily. We have andesitic magma. It is viscous, so it's a little more slow moving and sticky, and it tends to erupt explosively. The reason it is a little bit more viscous or a little more sticky is that it has a little bit more silica. With, uh, again, a good example of a, silica, a silicate mineral would be quartz, the most common mineral uh, on in Earth's crust. Since andesitic magma comes from the area kind of between the crust and the upper mantle, we're getting the further we get to the crust, the more silica silica based minerals like quartz are going to be in the melted material the more sticky it's going to be so andesitic magma very sticky slow moving it kind of flows like cold honey just very slow moving so it's viscous and since it's so sticky it can build up a lot of pressure and volcanoes that have are fed by andesitic magma tend to erupt explosively and then we get rhyolitic magma extremely viscous extremely slow moving very very sticky stuff it's moved so slow and it's so sticky and it traps so much stuff like like gas that it can build up so much pressure that when yeah, a volcano that's fed by rhyolitic magma erupts boom we're, we start tiptoeing in the realm of super volcano when we're talking about rhyolitic magma fed volcanoes and the reason it's so sticky is because it has even more silica based minerals like quartz melted because rhyolitic magma comes from crustal melted material. So the, the closer to the surface you get, the more silica based minerals like quartz will be in the melted material. The more of that, the more sticky, the more viscosity that's going to be, the more explosive and the less flowy. How we distinguish all of those, again, is first and foremost kind of based on uh, silica or silicate based minerals like quartz. So the composition of magma is anywhere from 45 to 75 percent of the magma by weight is silicates like quartz. Um, so on the low end would be your basaltic magma, on the higher end would be rhyolitic magma. Also water vapor and carbon dioxide gas are usually present as well. But mostly we distinguish between those three kind of mostly first and foremost on the amount of silica based minerals like quartz. Low amount, basaltic. High amount, rhyolitic. In between, and acidic. Because they're coming from different locations, uh, they have different temperatures. Um, at when they erupt, lavas vary in temperature between 650 and 1200 degrees Celsius. Um, it tends that magma with um, higher water content melt at lower temperatures. Um, yeah, so they have a little bit different temperature when they do erupt. And then viscosity, but again, that's tied to composition. So lavas vary in their ability to flow, and that's influenced by silica content and temperature. Um, so really, you know, when it comes down to it, you could really distinguish each magma mostly on composition, how much or how little uh, silicate minerals like quartz are melted in the magma. Composition affects temperature, it affects viscosity, it affects explosivity, so on and so forth. 
So again, just to touch on viscosity real quick, just to kind of define it, it's the degree to which a, uh, to which a substance resists flow. It's the definition of viscosity. So a less viscous liquid does not resist flow, therefore it wants to flow very easily. So a low viscosity fluid is very runny. Imagine like water, water is a very low viscosity fluid. It flows very easily. Whereas a more viscous or a high viscosity liquid is very thick. Think slow moving like cold honey. It's really dependent on silica content, uh, minerals that have SiO2 in some way, shape, or form embedded into their chemical formula, and the most common silica-based mineral, again, is quartz. So again, it's how much or how little quartz or other silica-based <coughs> minerals are in the melted material determine its characteristics. So again, basaltic, it's from deepest down, it's going to be the hottest, and since it's further away from the crust, it's going to be the lowest in silica-based content, therefore low viscosity, very runny, low gas content. It can't trap a lot of gas because it's very runny. Any gas that does bubble out of it can do so quite easily. It's not getting stuck. So basaltic magma, low in silica, but high in iron, magnesium, calcium. And these minerals, iron, magnesium, and calcium, tend to be darker in color just by their nature. Therefore, basaltic magma is the darkest. It's usually a dark gray to a black uh, basaltic magma, which can make different types of rocks. And those rocks are also very dark colored, or almost dark gray to black. Rhyolitic, the coolest, highest viscosity, highest gas content, the highest amount of silica. Because it has the highest amount of silica, it's very sticky, therefore high viscosity, it doesn't flow very well. And since it's so sticky, it traps a lot of gas, so it's very explosive. When it does erupt, it's melted material from kind of closer up to the surface, so it is the uh, least, uh, or it's the most coolest uh, magma created from 650 to 800 degrees Celsius. Um, in this case, high in potassium and sodium, which are just lighter colored minerals uh, in general. So therefore, rhyolitic magma, when it cools to form different igneous rocks, are just lighter in color, kind of uh, light pinks and light tans. And then in between, kind of in between silica content, in between chemical composition, in between temperature, in between viscosity, in, inter, in between gas content, is andesitic magma. That's why it's called a, a, an intermediate magma, because it's right in between. So again, basaltic magma coming from deeper down, lower silica content, higher temperature, more gentle when it erupts, that's coming from the upper mantle. The closer you get to the surface, so andesitic magma, a little bit more silica, more sticky, more explosive, higher viscosity, and then crust, lowest temperature, highest viscosity, very slow moving sticky material, very explosive if it were to erupt. Put all of that in a chart, and then here you go. <clears throat> For instance, basaltic magma, if it now cools underground, uh, well, basaltic magma, when it erupts and cools, it forms basaltic rock on the surface. That same basaltic magma, if it cools down below surface, it, I mean, it just never makes its way up. If it cools down and forms a rock below surface, it's called gabbro. Rhyolitic magma forms rhyolite on the surface, but if that rhyolitic magma cools underground, it forms granite. Maybe you have countertops made of that stuff. Andesitic magma, if it erupts, forms a rock called andesite. If andesitic magma cools underground, it forms diorite. Um, so there's also kind of an in-between the andesite and rhyolite, and that's dacite, uh, and or it forms granodiorite below the surface. But well, you can see how each of these forms a little bit different volcano as well. Um, the basaltic magma and resulting rocks are darker in color because of the chemical composition. We refer to that as being mafic. Rhyolite and granite, so cooled rhyolitic magma forming these rocks, are made up of more lighter colored material, um, and we refer to that as being felsic. And then the kind of intermediates are kind of in between. They're not light, they're not dark, they're like gray, they're like gray colors. Dark gray, light gray, they're right in between. 
And then you have obsidian, which is kind of just this weird stuff that cools so fast that it doesn't really have a, a, a rock um, crystalline structure, so it has no specific composition. It's kind of a weird thing. More on that on the, on the next section, where we actually are talking about igneous rocks. But again, based on the magma content, you get different rocks that eventually form. You get different volcanoes that eventually form. So basaltic magma, since it's very flowy and runny, forms something called shield volcanoes. Andesite, it's a little bit more sticky, so as it's erupting, it kind of forms more cone-shaped, stereotypical um, uh, volcanoes called composite or sometimes stratovolcanoes. And rhyolite, it's so super sticky, it can't really form mountains, but it can form large bulges that will erupt massively, and they form super volcanoes. And dacite and granodiorite, we just, yeah, you can ignore that for now. So in any case, that's where we're going. So we're going to pause here. When we come back, the next section we're going to talk about is igneous rocks. So let's talk about how we have, we have magma. That's what this previous unit was all about, this molten material. When it cools either below ground or above ground, it will form rocks. What rocks are created, that's what we're going to explore. See you back here in just a second.